Some children are born with a silver spoon in their mouth. I think I was born with a paintbrush in my hand. Um, uh, around uh, the age of four, I was always painting, and when an uncle asked me if I would like something, what would I like for my birthday, everyone expected a little girl to say a doll, but I said, paints, that's all I ever wanted was paints, and so I painted all the time and drew all the time. Then somebody in the Philadelphia school system recognized me as an exceptionally talented, artistically talented child, and spoke to the principal about me, and because of that I was put into a special class for artistically gifted children at the Museum of Philadelphia, a beautiful museum, and that was every Saturday morning from 9 to 12. All of the other children went home at 12 o'clock, not me. I was very stubborn, and I insisted that my family uh, nobody would come and pick me up until the museum closed, which was around 6 o'clock. So after eating a sandwich in the cafeteria, I spent the afternoon as a little girl alone wandering around the Museum of Philadelphia, looking at all the great paintings, Cezanne, El Greco, and saying to myself, someday when I'm grown up, I will be making beautiful big paintings like these. Well, I have never had any doubt, no, it's so um, unusual for me when I speak with people who don't know what they want to do and didn't know what, what they want to do and are still trying to find themselves. That was never my problem. It just was a natural thing for me to do. I did painting and drawing all the time, just like I breathe or sleep or wake up. And uh, it was just a natural thing that I did all the time. And I can't imagine my life without it. When I was at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, I also went to the Barnes Foundation. Dr. Barnes was a known collector in Marion, Pennsylvania, and started this foundation. The classes were one afternoon a week, and the whole course lasted exactly two years. I never missed one single minute. I loved that class, and I loved the Barnes Foundation. Violette Damasia was our teacher, and uh, I became good friends with Violette and had a correspondence with her for a while. I have still at least one letter. I'm sorry to say that a lot of the correspondence was lost as I moved a lot, but I do have still autographed books from Violette Damasi and Dr. Albert C. Barnes. And uh, that was an exposure to great paintings came f that came from the French school. There were people from all over the world who lived in Paris and painted there. And Dr. Barnes would go into a studio like Soutine when Soutine was literally starving to death and Soutine he would buy a lot of soutines. Of course, now soutine uh, is, a soutine is millions of dollars. And Dr. Barnes bought Matisse and Modigliani and just, just about everything in sight. Just as the Americans, uh, Gertrude Stein and Leo Stein, her brother and his wife, and the Cone sisters from Baltimore, these were American collectors who came over and recognized these great artists in, in France started buying them way before the French did. And um, in fact, the French museums missed out on a lot of these paintings. And now they could have had a soutine for a handful of pennies. But now, am I supposed to be speaking English or French? I forget. Yes, anyway, um, but now they're willing to pay millions of dollars to get one soutine to fill up a space that's an empty space in one of their museum collections. Um, hanging out in Montparnasse at the Café Select, the Café Coupole, uh, I knew a lot of artists, uh, Yves Klein, uh, César, Iki Lee, Giacometti, and uh, Giacometti always came over and put my head between his two hands and turned my face and always touched my cheekbones. He liked my cheekbones. And one day he said to me, uh, oh, come with me, I have to do an errand. So I said, okay. He called a taxi. We arrived at a store, we got out, he went quickly and I just followed him along. I had no idea what he was trying to do. We go into the store, he looked very quickly and he knew what he was looking for and he found a black stole, what is called a stole, a long black scarf with beautiful fringe on it, very, very gorgeous scarf. And um, he, he took the scarf and he put it behind my head 
like this, and you start, started wrapping the ends around my shoulders, around my neck, so pretty soon my head was totally isolated from the rest of my body and from the rest of the ambiance. Just my head was shown in this, this black all around it. And then he went and paid for it. We went out of the store, and I said, this is gorgeous, but, you know, what do I do? And he said, it's yours. Well, we went to a cafe and sat down and ordered something, and I said, um, is there something I can do for you in exchange? Because I can't just, you know, take something like this. Can I maybe translate some letters or help you clean your studio or wash your brushes or your tools or something in exchange? And Giacometti said, if we do an exchange, it will no longer be a gift. If I'm walking behind somebody, a woman wearing a summer dress, and the colors and the design are offensive to me, I actually cross the street not to have to look at it, because it's ugly. Whereas when I was in, in, in India, if I saw two women walking down the street wearing beautiful saris, and one was turquoise with little purple uh, squares at the bottom, and her friend was wearing something avocado green with yellow dots mixed with pink dots around the edges, I just thought that was so beautiful I could have followed those two women for a few blocks just to have the joy of looking at those colors together. I showed in many salons, what the French call salon, it's a big uh, um, group exhibition, and Sonia Delaunay came by one of my paintings and was very uh, interested in the painting and talked to me. So I was totally flattered by this, uh, by Sonia Delaunay, who was a very well-known artist, a much older lady. And uh, she said she was so interested in my painting, she'd like to come to my studio and see my paintings. So eventually she came, and at that time, I was married to an American artist, a painter, and we were living in a loft um, an, a, a woodworker's loft in the 11th arrondissement in Paris, and it was freezing, we had no heat, and it was a very high up with no elevator, and uh, but a great space to work and live, and I had two young children who were born at the American Hospital in Paris. So we were struggling, and she came, and uh, also Alix de Rothschild came to see our paintings and bought a number of things and saw that we were very cold. And she said, how do you heat here? And we said, we don't, we just don't. A few days later, Alix de Rothschild sent us a stove and the plumbers to install the stove. So from then on, we had heat. Many, many thanks to Alix de Rothschild. Anyway, Sonia Delaunay, uh, liked the painting, she knew we were struggling, and it was around Christmas time. We didn't know what we were going to eat for dinner. We had no money. We had uh, packages, a couple of packages of rice and spaghetti, but we didn't have anything festive, or we didn't have any turkey or any meat or anything. And um, all of a sudden, there was a knock on our door. Well, that meant somebody climbed up four enormous uh, high stairs and knocked on our door. And I said, uh, what is it? And somebody said what sounded like a uh, and don't, and don't in French would be a tooth. I couldn't understand what it was, and I opened the door, and he was trying to say a dand. That means a turkey. Sonia Delaunay had sent us a cooked, a, a roasted turkey with all the trimmings, as well as a book of art for children, for my two children, and presents for my children. I was so overwhelmed and touched, and this was her chauffeur. We let him in, we invited him in, and I wanted to give him something to take back to Sonia Delaunay. I didn't know what I could give her, but um, I had some avocado plants that I had raised myself, and they were doing quite well. I went into my daughter's bedroom and found a red ribbon of, and a pink ribbon and made made a very nice little uh, assortment of ribbons and put it around the plant and gave it to him to bring back to Sonia Delaunay from my children to thank her for the presence. And um, I was very touched by that. She also wrote me a note, which I still have, saying that she wanted to do something special for me, that I could go to her art supply dealer, which was on the Rue La Brea, that made very fine pigments. All the great artists used those paints. Lefebvre Foinet, Matisse used them, and Modigliani, and Soutine, and Picasso. 
and um, that I could go in there and buy my paint tubes and leave the bill for Sonia Delaunay to pay. So it might have been that I didn't have a lot of food, but I always had paint to paint to be able to work. Est-ce que tu peux le dire euh, ça en français? Comment est-ce que tu définis ta peinture du? Well, my, my painting is called, I seem to fall into the category known as abstract expressionist, which uh, was very important in New York in the 50s. Actually, a lot of things, uh, art goes back and forth all over the world, and sometimes the things that came from Europe influenced the Americans, and then the Americans did something different with it. For instance, around 1917 was the Armory Show, and a lot of paintings were shown from France, and American painters saw them for the first time and were just overwhelmed by by the colors, the uh, the Fauvist period, and by uh, Marcel Duchamp and Matisse, and that influenced American art. And then little by little, uh, the art of America began to influence other countries, and this is something which flows back and forth. But that was a very important uh, movement in American art, and I have a very academic background. I was a scholarship student at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, one of the oldest uh, art schools in the world, and there I had, a, I had to study, I was a scholarship student, so I had to study perspective, anatomy, still life, nude, uh, portraiture, landscape, everything. And every year I had to submit my work to a jury of the professors and to be judged, and uh, I went through every year on a scholarship. I won the uh, Packard Prize for drawings of live animals. I used to like to go to the zoo when I was a st an art student and sketch the animals. And of course, they didn't keep still like a model would, but I just enjoyed it very much and did a lot of hundreds and hundreds of drawings of animals and won the Packard Prize for drawings of animals, live animals. Um, I also studied at the University of Pennsylvania, where I got a combined degree, uh, what they call a Bachelor of Fine Arts. There I took the academic courses, a lot of art history, I studied French, I studied psychology, not that it always did me very much good, perhaps in raising my own children, but um, I tried the best I could. Magnifique. C'est bien. Mm -hmm. Superbe. Vas-y. Okay, buongiorno a tutti, a, a, a dopo, ciao. Oui, mais il n'y a pas de raison pour que ça ait changé. C'était vrai avant, c'est encore vrai.